So Intel just did yet another big improvement for their graphics cards. 20% performance uplift in DirectX 11 games means that art cards are going to get better and better over time. But also in this video, so I think it stands for Intel Present Monitor Beta. And this is going to change the way that we review graphics cards or even monitor stats for your PC. This can help all of you guys figure out how you should align settings in your game. If your CPU is fast enough for your GPU, this is a game changer. <laughs> but you know what else is a game changer? If you're anything like this, Microsoft is coming to get you and wants to charge $200 for Windows 11. That's why our only hope is a CD key. With them, you can get Windows 10 Pro for a low price and upgrade it for free to Windows 11. Once you get to checkout, make sure to use code VEX for an extra 25% off of this already great deal and just choose your preferred payment method and you will be emailed your code. Working with SCD keys, all of their codes have come from OEM manufacturers and they're completely safe, so no need to worry about that. Again, huge thanks to today's sponsor. Make sure to use code VEX. Let's get back into it. Yes, it's important to note that Intel present mon isn't actually a new thing because Programs like Cap Frame X, which many people do use uh, reviewing GPUs, CPUs, all that kind of stuff to find out the statistics on your computer. Intel's present mon is actually at the core of this. This is what gathers the data and gives it to the software. Now they just gave it its own overlay and it is going to be compatible with all GPUs from Nvidia, AMD, and Intel. This is the one that I use to do my GPU reviews and testing. And as you can see, you can go into here and you can choose what kind of stuff is in the monitoring. But this is kind of clunky in MSI Afterburner. It'd be cool to have something that's a little bit more streamlined. So this is how things would typically look in a game like this. So this is Last of Us Part 1 on high settings with DLSS quality 1440p. As you can see by the top left, the GPU utilization is bumping around like 80 to 90%. And even in a game like this that is very graphically demanding, even very VRAM heavy, you see my CPU, which is a 12 core CPU, is using 60% of it. So it's like around like six to seven cores of the CPU is being used currently. So typically how we benchmark things and has been basically the standard for a while is to use frame time graphs. And MSI Afterburner and Reva Tuner Statistics Server does show this in the top left. You're seeing anywhere from eight to like 15 milliseconds between frames on that graph. But what Intel is doing very different here, instead of just showing the frame times, they are showing the GPU busy. So the frame time is how long it takes the CPU to generate a frame, and then the GPU busy is how long it takes the GPU to generate a frame. And generally speaking, if you are GPU limited in, the, in a game, they should be about the same time. That's actually about what we're seeing here. The GPU is rendering frames in about 13 milliseconds, and so is the CPU. And to exemplify a GPU limit, we can also turn the rendering scale all the way down to performance, and at this, the GPU is not going to be utilized nearly as much. It's CPU limited because the, the frame time, which refers to the CPU rendering time, is at 13 milliseconds still. That's as fast as my 5900X CPU can pump out frames, but the GPU can actually render a frame in like 12 milliseconds. So it's actually waiting on the CPU to do work. This GPU busy statistic is going to change the way that we do reviews. It isn't going to be a question whether or not games are CPU limited anymore when you can just show this. So I've also had a fear for quite a while now that in Remnant 2 that it is CPU limited. Apparently this Ryzen 5900X can only pump out 60 FPS when looking at this thing. Like, wow, what is the CPU limit coming from? You see that the GPU busy is actually significantly lower than the frame time. So that means that the GPU is rendering frames faster than the CPU can pump them out, which means that it is a CPU limitation in this case, which is really cool because that means in my case here, say right now I'm using DLSS quality. That means I can go ahead and turn off DLSS quality because realistically, a CPU can't handle that many frames anyways. Now my G now I'm GPU limited because my frame time and my GPU busy graphs are at about the same time, even though for some reason it's bugging out quite a bit. I think once this comes out of beta, this will function a little bit better, but on the ultra settings at 1440p, the GPU busy and the frame time graph are about the same with the CPU and GPU combo. Let's see if I could get more FPS out of my game. And in this case, you could maybe try turning on DLSS and turning on quality and see 
if you're CPU limited based on those graphs. And it looks like at the ultra preset, a DLSS quality 1440p, still not quite, I'm a little bit CPU limited, but not by much. You could basically tell at what graphics preset your system could handle and if you need to push your graphics card more or if you need to push your CPU more. Because usually your CPU is gonna determine how much overall FPS you're gonna be able to get into a game and then your GPU is going to be able to show you how much like graphical performance you can get in a game. We're gonna get more CPU limited as we drop the resolution. So let's go down to DLSS performance and it just makes it more and more obvious. You see the, the much bigger gap when looking at the, the GPU busy versus the frame times. And if you go in different areas, you know, it's more or less noticeable. Over here, it's really not that bad. This is like actually pumping out like close to like 80 FPS or something. But if you go over here near this crystal, we're way more CPU limited. You see the, the gap getting bigger and bigger. We're only at like 60 FPS because we're CPU limited looking at this crystal thing. So in future, I'm probably going to try to benchmark somewhere else in this game, but it's kind of hard for me to find an area that is consistent that also isn't CPU limited. Probably have to figure that out, but that's up to me to figure out and not really for you guys to worry about. I still think the interface for Benchmarking with MSI Afterburner and Reaver Tuner Statistics Server is a lot cleaner. All you have to do is go through and check a box. They're all listed here. Whichever ones you want, you just check a box and then you can put it into the overlay. And just to add one statistic to the overlay, you have to go through a whole menu of options just to find it. And it gets pretty annoying over time. Also, you don't have the ability to align things horizontally, which would take up less space on the screen and organize it by more of the GPU and the CPU instead. Un unlike MSI Afterburner, where things are a little bit more concise. So if they added the ability to go through the menus faster and also to align them horizontally, that'd be awesome. And technically speaking, if they just added a GPU busy option to MSI Afterburner, there wouldn't be a real reason to use Intel's overlay instead. But yeah, Intel's new PresentMon software with its overlay, I guess might be a huge upgrade in GP reviews and showing statistics in your games. And even for just normal people that aren't reviewing cards, but just testing your performance to be able to see if you're CPU limited or GPU limited to help you fine tune settings. Or if you have an imbalance in your system, like you want to play at certain graphical settings, but your CPU can't pump out enough FPS or your CPU is way overkill for your GPU. These GPU busy and frame time comparisons really makes it easy to tell uh, what area of your system that you're bottlenecked. And also I'm pretty sure Tim talked about how you could also see if you're VRAM limited. So not just the fact that you're using up all your VRAM, but because of how fast your VRAM is, is that limiting how much FPS you can get in a game? You know, I think Intel still needs, still needs to get over a little bit of quirks that are in the software, but once they get there, that's pretty sick. This is going to change GPU reviews forever. So I'm excited. It's going to make it a lot easier to find CPU limits. But anyways, that's all I've got to show you guys today. Let me know what you think and y'all have a good one. Peace.